I just want to summarize very simply what we've been doing in the first five days of the retreat. <coughs> so um, let's say uh, that we started, I think most of us started from the presumption when we arrived here that we are a body-mind personality, we are an inside separate self okay and um, let's just call that ego right it doesn't mean it's a terrible thing but you know, we just fundamentally presume that we are separate egos the ego is a, a skin encapsulated sense of I right so I is identified with the body and the mind. That's who I am. I am the body and the mind. So this is the, the uh, usual state of human ignorance. Right? Most people presume, oh well this is just the human condition, of course. Of course I'm the body and the mind. Of course I'm separate from you. This is the presumption the unexamined presumption that most people uh, live in. And that's why, why do they call it ignorance in the East? So in the East they don't, in the West we tend to, we tend to talk about sin, right, which comes from Christianity, the idea of sin, which thanks to the Catholic Church, not to Jesus, but thanks to the Catholic Church, has the connotation of bad. You're a sinner. So of course in Christianity they have the concept which didn't come from Jesus, it came from Saint Augustine of original sin. That just because we're born, just because we're born, we're sinners. And we will always be sinners unless we believe in God and Jesus and all that mythology and then we might be saved if we're lucky and we might go to heaven when we get out of here. And this is kind of the, a, a simple way of describing the Christian mythology. Um, but in the East they don't have the concept of sin, they have the concept of ignorance which simply means that we're ignoring what's real, what's actually true. You see, so it's like Reality is staring us in the face and we're like, just like Tiago was saying, where? No, consciousness? God? Where? What? What are you talking about? Or a good metaphor is like, um, if you have fish, you know, fish are swimming around in a tank of water and you say to the fish, hey, can you see the water? You're, you're surrounded by the water. And the fish is going, what do you mean? Don't know what you're talking about. Because the fish has been swimming in it forever, you see, just as we've been swimming in consciousness forever, and it's so absolutely obvious, it's so close, closer than close, that we just don't see it. You see? That's ignorance. So you can, that can be symbolized by a, a clenched fist. It's the presumption, no, I am a separate, isolated body-mind in here. And so the whole movement, uh, the whole process of awakening that we've been engaged in together is releasing that contraction. So in this metaphor you could say shifting from I am the clenched fist, <coughs> I am the separate I, body, mind, Pete, right? And you are your separate eyes that go by all your separate names and histories, right? <clears throat> and actually letting go, right, you can see it's just letting that be as it is, letting that be as it is, letting that be as it is, and gradually, it's like a flower that starts to open, we start to rest in this consciousness, this deeper consciousness that we are, in which there is no compulsive identification with body or mind of separateness. You with me? So all of the beautiful uh, sharings, you know, over the last few days, 
and they've all been very um, different. But the authenticity that has come through and that's impacted all of us is, is in, in, in all these different ways you've all been describing this awakening to, the, to what we could say the true self or consciousness itself or the one being. And, w and when, we, when we awaken, what do we experience? What do we experience? Primarily, we experience freedom. Right? Freedom from this contraction. Right? Freedom from mind. Freedom from separation. Freedom from fear. Freedom from desire. Freedom from seeking. Isn't that what you're all resting in? Yes. Yeah. Now, there may be there may be different degrees of how you how deep you're resting in that, but I'm very confident that's what you're all resting in. So that means you're all resting to a significant degree in awakened consciousness. So let that in. It's not still somewhere up there. It's right here. Okay. So what we're going to start doing um, from this day on, and we're going to continue uh, doing quite a bit of meditation, but we're going to start exploring, right? Because it's one thing to sit in silence like this, you know, for five days or more. But then for most of us in the Western world, especially, but even in the Eastern world these days, Eventually, we're going to open our eyes and we're going to get up and we're going to start walking and talking and acting in this appearance, aren't we? Now, some yogis and mystics, they, they decided not to do that. They decided, no, I just want to stay here. It's very peaceful here. You see? And that's why a lot of the great sages and mystics, they would go to the mountains, they would go to the forest. They would create a very simple situation where somebody would just bring enough food just to keep the body going. And they would just want to remain in that being. Now, the, the big, um, of course, the big question that comes up for everybody uh, when, when you begin to awaken and dis discover this peace, this inner freedom, is what about when I go back to my life? You know, what about when I have to uh, act and walk and talk in the world? You see, and there's this fear, usually, that I'm going to lose it. You know, I'm going to lose touch with this depth. So, um, what I wanted to do uh, this morning session is just take us into the to, into the beginning stages of of embracing the totality of body, mind and world from this ground of consciousness that you're discovering. Okay? So to do that I'm going to take you through a chapter in, in my book uh, which is called On Having No Head. Right? So this is all about having no head. And you'll find out what that, what that means. And I want you to follow me uh, experientially with what I'm reading. Okay, and check in and see if it's your experience right now. So, as your attunement and surrender to the awakening process deepens, you will find that you are naturally abiding, resting, more consistently as the witnessing consciousness. So you'll understand what witnessing means. It means you're simply aware. There's no interpretation. There's no, this is good, this is bad. I like, I don't like, it's just, just simply aware. <laughs> Instead of automatically thinking that you are your thoughts, feeling that you are your feelings, and sensing that you are your sensations, 
you more consistently recognize all of the changing contents of your experience to be a relative expression of who you are, but not ultimately who you are. You understand? So relative because you're aware that thoughts, feelings, sensations are arising, maybe staying for a while, passing away. So relative means that which changes. Okay? So your experience of thought, feeling, sensation, we could say is a relative aspect of who you are. Yeah? But, that, but it's not ultimately who you are, is it? Right? Because who you ultimately are is that which never changes. That which witnesses the, the relative. Is that clear in your experience right now? As your center of gravity, so center of gravity where it means where you're fundamentally identified, right? center of gravity. As your center of gravity shifts from small self to big self, from psychological self, body, mind, emotion, to consciousness itself, from ego I to I am presence. What you previously presume, presumed to be subject, right? your psychological experience of being an individual, right? so that you previously presumed that I, the subject, is my psychological experience of being an individual is now experienced to be object do you see so what you previously presumed this is I right? I am my psychological experience body mind yeah? now that becomes object to you you're with me yes. isn't that true in your experience right now Yes. Good. All phenomena that constitute the body, mind and world appear within you, coming and going. But you, as the witness, are what is described in Hindu Vedanta, neti neti. So neti neti neti, it's a Sanskrit term. It means not this, not that. I am not this, I am not that. <laughs> not this, not that. Not body, not mind, not emotion, nothing. <laughs> this is what the Indian sages say. I am being consciousness bliss. <laughs> not this, not that. <laughs> and uh, so that's the, the advice of a dancer that comes from the East. And, and similarly in Buddhism, it's essentially the same teaching. The Buddha, the Buddha said there are three signs of, of being. One is everything is impermanent. Right? And therefore, every, if you attach to anything that is impermanent, you will suffer. Right? So the, the cause of suffering is our attachment to that which is impermanent. Impermanent means? Not, not permanent. <laughs> Changing, coming and going. And then because everything that arises is impermanent, it is not self. It cannot be who you are. That's the Buddha's teaching. You see, you, you recognize that in your experience right now? Right. <clears throat> Resting as the pure witness, your sense of self widens into a vast freedom. Isn't that true? <laughs> yes. An expanding ocean of infinite ease. Yeah? Everything's okay, no problem. And transcendence. Is this true? Yes. Yeah. Checking. <laughs> <laughs> Even when you are when, when you are caught in your self-contracted ways, yeah, even when this happens, you always have immediate and direct access to the ever-present witness. 
Isn't that true? Mm -hmm. If you're willing to let go, you always have access to this. If you're saying yes, you're in trouble because <laughs> you have no excuses anymore. <laughs> You might get fixated for, fixated for a moment or many moments on this or that thought, this or that idea, this or that emotion, this or that activity. But when you fall back into the prior ground of the unchanging I am, then the whirlpool of your narcissistic infatuation, right? Me, 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 how am I doing, how am I feeling, doing good, doing bad. Right? Unwinds. Yeah? So the whirlpool, the remo remoinho, is it? <laughs> it starts to unwind and you become one with the ocean. <clears throat> so awakening as the witness breaks the spell of our unconscious identification with the ego, the separate eye. But there is still further to go in the direct contemplation of reality. Okay. So in everything I've just described, we're experiencing freedom from. You get that? Freedom from body, mind and world. That's represented by the, the blue area in this model. Being eternity peace. And the reason it says everything is already perfect is when we rest in, in that, no matter what's happening, in the body, mind and world, it's okay. It's okay. It doesn't need to change for you to be free. Now, this is a big realization if you really get it. It means circumstances and the t all the world out there and all the crazy things that are going on, you know, and your, your children and your f husband or your wife or your mother, mother and your father, they don't have to change, you see. For you to be free. Do you all get that? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's why it says everything's already perfect. It doesn't mean everything in the world is perfect. Do you see what I mean? But it means everything's okay. Everything is already perfect in the sense that it is what it is. Everything is as it is. And if we insist that things should be different, then we suffer. It's very simple. <clears throat> so there's further to go. Because we are so conditioned to differentiate the witnessing of things subject, right, the witnessing of things is the subject. I am the witness from the things themselves, the objects, everything we perceive, thoughts, emotions, sensations, tree, mountain, flower, star, appears as an object that arises and passes away. You with me? As a result of this, we almost inevitably conceive of consciousness as a kind of absolute subject that can be separated out from all objects that come and go. Okay? So we shift from self-contraction, body-mind, separate eye, right? and we start to awaken to this pure being, this consciousness that is simply aware, witnessing everything. But usually what's, what's, um, what's still there is a subtle duality between I am the witness and then there's all the objects, whether it's thoughts, emotions, other people, the whole world. Do you see? Subject, object. So we shift from being a, a separate I, subject, to an absolute subject. Are you with me? But when we, let's say when we open our eyes right, and we suddenly become aware of body, mind, world, 
right? All of this. Right? Usually, if even if we've gone very deep in uh, in meditation, usually what occurs is we shift from that open hand back to, well, here I am again, I'm a person inside a body mind. And there might be a bit of a sense of, yeah, a bit more expansion, a bit more, ooh, everything feels very peaceful. And, but this fundamentally, we presume, now I'm walking and talking, I'm a body mind again. Are you with me? We usually think of our mind as existing in here, right? In, inside our head, usually. Right? And the world that we perceive through the senses, we presume exists out there. Right? Do, do, do any of you presume that normally? <laughs> <laughs> so I, my mind, is in here somewhere, and everything else is out there, not me. Right? Mm -hmm. If you pay close attention right now, you will see that you are experiencing the world out there as sensations and perceptions. Right? Right now. So you're all looking at me, or the scene here. What is it? It's perceptions and sensations, isn't it? Mm -hmm. There are visual images, perhaps tactile feelings, Perhaps sounds, smells, if you were eating something, it would be tastes. Yeah. Where do these sensations and perceptions arise? Where do these sensations and perceptions arise? Now don't go up into your head and go, just stay with your direct experience. Do they arise out there? Do the, do the perceptions, the visual perceptions, your awareness of this room and me and the whole world right now, does it arise out there? How many people say yes? Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> so do the sensations and perceptions arise in here? Yeah. Not even in here. Yeah, okay, so how many would say yes? How many, how many say, well, not sure? <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Or, would it be more accurate to say that they arise and exist in the consciousness that transcends and includes the apparent duality of in here and out there? Shall I say that again? Yes. Or would it be more accurate to say that they, right, perceptions, sensations, arise in the consciousness that transcends and includes the apparent duality of in here and out there? So what I'm suggesting is your experience of consciousness right now transcends in here and out there. It includes in here and out there. You with me? Yes. yes. Don't try and go up into your head. You can't get it there. You have to stay with your direct experience. Right? You with me? Yeah. <clears throat> it's actually radically simple. It's very, very simple. You have to just stay with your direct experience, direct perception. All right, here's another question. Is it not true that everything you are conscious of right now must exist in consciousness for you to be conscious of it. Yes. True? Yes. So everything you are aware, aware of right now and in any moment must exist in consciousness for you to be conscious of it. Have you ever been conscious of a world that didn't exist in consciousness? Maybe, maybe the one of imagination. Still happening in consciousness. <coughs> okay, yes, good point. Yes. Are you everyone with me? Have you ever been conscious of a world that didn't arise in your consciousness? But just, just if 
we have different consciousness. Maybe two. Now don't yeah. go there. Just yeah. stay with. Yeah. Just stay with your direct experience. Yeah. I think it's, right? it's not possible. Yeah. It's true, right? Does everyone see that's true? <clears throat> there, there, are, there is no sentient being, whether it's a human being, a horse, a dog, or a worm, or a wasp, that experiences a world separate from their consciousness of it. Right? <clears throat> if you answer yes, then ask yourself this question. Is consciousness something that appears within your experience? Right? Consciousness is something that appears within your experience. Or is consciousness that empty, open, dimensionless space that contains all that you are experiencing in every moment? You with me? So it's obviously the second, right? So why am I why am why am I taking you through this? Because then you can start to embrace, and in the model, it's the it's the orange part of the the model. So this the, the whole point of the yin and yang sign is that what appears to be the absolute subject, yeah, when we close our eyes, pure consciousness itself, yeah? nothing, nothing arising, not this, not that, being consciousness, bliss, eternal, yeah. That's one face of God of spirit. But then the other face is when we open our eyes and we inhabit this body and world, this is also God consciousness, spirit. It cannot be separated. There is, there is no separation between those two. Are you with me? So, one of the fundamental unexamined presumptions of the human condition, of the ignorant human condition, is that the world, that there is an objective pre-existing world that is always there when we are not conscious of it. <clears throat> So just let that sink in a little bit. Can you repeat? <coughs> so the fundamental unexamined presumption is that the world, the universe, is an objective pre-existing world that is separate from our consciousness of it. So what I'm suggesting is, and I don't want you to believe this, it's not about, you can't discover this through mm -hmm any kind of rational process. You have to transcend the mind and look at your direct experience and see that subject and object can never be separated. And in fact, they are not two. Do you see? They are not two. It's not like you appear first and then body, mind, world. It's all happening now, 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 it's one event, you see? Now if you identify that I am a body-mind and I'm, I'm in here, of course it will appear like, well of course the world is separate from me. I'm just this little, little insignificant speck of dust in this huge universe. Of course the world and the universe are separate from me, they're out there. But if you shift, if you awaken, so this radical discovery, oh my God, who I am transcends this body-mind and includes and transcends it. Yeah? And, the, and everything that, uh, that I am aware of, everything that is arising, is arising in me, in my consciousness. But it's not really my consciousness, do you see what I mean? Because there is no owner, there is no me, my there's just consciousness. Everyone with me? So I'm going to take, I'm going to describe, um, read this next bit to you. So look at an object in front of you with an open, relaxed gaze. So gaze just means you open, you relax. 
It could be your hand, a tree, or a table, or whatever is in front of you right now. Just be aware of the object arising in this moment. Then gently let the sense of witnessing the object dissolve into the object itself. So you can do this right now. You can, you can look at me if you want, you can look at the, the floor, the cushion. So let the, the sense of the witness dissolve into the object itself. Just be aware of that object arising in this moment. Let the object arise in your awareness as if it existed by itself. Allow yourself to become completely one with that object so that you do not see it because you do not exist. As you are looking at that object, becoming one with it, you may notice that you cannot sense your own head. Where you presume your head to be, there is instead only that object arising. Now gently release your awareness from that one object and allow your awareness to expand, to encompass everything that is arising in the perceptual field of your consciousness. Allow yourself to become conscious right now of all that is arising in you. All that you see, all that you hear, all that you touch, all that you smell and all that you taste. Recognize that you cannot find a line of separation between the perceiver and the perceived. Realize that the entire world display is arising moment to moment right now where you once felt your head was. Are you with me? This open eye meditation is a very immediate and always accessible doorway to the direct perception of the deepest truth of existence. It simply requires the suspension of the unexamined presumption or idea that there is a subject in here and an object or a world out there. When you suspend, you will understand suspend, you just let go of that presumption. When you let go of the presumption that you only exist inside your skin, then it becomes immediately obvious that whatever you perceive is arising directly on your shoulders where your head used to be. Right? So you, you, you presume, well, I'm in here, I'm in my head. But your actual direct perception is, I am everything. You see? I am everything. When, when, we're, when we're in the, in, the, in the blue space or face of spirit, of being, you see, when we're letting go in deep meditation, what do we, many of you have described in different ways, the recognition, I am nothing. Right? So I go from, I am a separate self, a person, right, with all its story and all that to I am nothing, I am just consciousness itself. But then when we open our eyes and we don't move, we don't move from that position of consciousness itself, the direct perception before you identify with a thought is I am 
everything. Are you with me? I am everything. Because subject cannot be separated from object. Are you with me? When you say open your eyes, it's open your eyes, not to... Open your eyes, yeah. There is no inside your face. In here. And uh, there is no outside your face, out there. Everything that is, habit is habitually perceived to be arising out there is actually arising in here. Do you see? There's no inner, there's no outer, really. <clears throat> this headless unity is not subject or object. It is not split into an in here or an out there. You are literally one with everything that is arising moment to moment. This body is you. This mind is you. Everyone is you. This world is you. All of this is you. Is one with you. It's not something with which you are in a relationship as if it's something else. You do not see the mountain or the tree or the stars. You are the mountain, the tree and the stars. Therefore, the knowing and feeling of you expands to embrace all space. All space is you and everything exists within it. The entire manifest universe is arising in you and as you. So that's what this model represents. So the model represents what we've all heard. You know, we've all heard spiritual teachings and teachers that say there is only one, or we are all one. There is only God. Or when Jesus said, the Father and I are one. Right? What does it mean? Is it just some kind of metaphor? spiritual idea? No. It's the literal truth. Absolutely literally. And this is really what uh, the full awakening and enlightenment is. It's this perception, this understanding, this recognition. And this is what non-duality means, not two. You see? There's no subject, there's no object. There appears to be many. Yeah? Right, and the mind, you see, we, we have a mind for a purpose because to function in this world, we need to give name and form to what appears. Right? So there's Carol, and she's wearing a black shirt and pink socks. You see? So the mind gives name and form to the to creation, to the appearance, right? Nothing wrong with that. We we need to function. Right? I'm Pete, there's one. He has a black beard. He's from Chile. You see? But usually we take mind and form, the the mind created interpretation of the creation. We take that to be reality. That's not reality. That's, that's uh, an imposition of mind on reality that may have a functional purpose. But the deeper reality is that there are no objects. And there are ultimately no separate forms. There's only conscious light. Oh, this has been discovered by mo modern physics also. 
that everything, even what appears to be so solid, is, is light at a very dense frequency. Okay, so matter is spirit moving slowly enough to be seen. You see? But the pure perception, pure consciousness is that it's, it's consciousness. This is, this is consciousness. This is a, we could call this matter, and we could say that thought and emotion is a subtle form of matter. You see? And what is it made of? It's made of consciousness. Right, so try and find, is that, where is the mind? Where is the mind? If you really investigate, you'll find, well, it's, there is nothing really there. There's just consciousness. There's just waves on the ocean. If you penetrate into matter, what do we find? There's nothing really there. It's just consciousness. I just wanted to share one more metaphor with you that I think is very helpful and can be a good reminder at any moment of this uh, mind-blowing, isn't it mind-blowing? It's completely <laughs> incredible. This is, you see, reality, the truth of our existence is absolutely incredible. It's amazing beyond belief. It's, it couldn't be more mind-blowingly incredible. What a gift. What a revelation. So the image is that the absolute, right, the, the absolute uh, one being that includes everything that exists and everything that doesn't exist, right, is consciousness itself. There, in, the, in consciousness itself, there is only one, right? There's no difference. There's no for differentiation, right? You with me? You with me, Alice? <laughs> right, so let's call that the white light, right? That's the white light of consciousness itself. Now, when the white light of consciousness itself when you let go, when you let go and re when you realize this is a ridiculous <coughs> idea that I am just this small, miserable, contracted, oh my God, why do I want to be that? Right? When you yeah. awaken, you realize, my God, just as Talia said yesterday, it all seems so solid. Right? You realize it's completely nothing at all. It's just an insubstantial dream. Right? You're still here as a body and a mind and an individual, right? This doesn't just dissolve in white light, right? You're still here, the world still appears, right? But now your consciousness is of the white light that's reflect, refracted, you know, do you know the word refracted? Through the body-mind, so it's like a prism. Do you all know what a prism is? Yeah. <coughs> it's usually a triangular form. And so the white light comes through the prism and then it splits into all the colors. All the colors of, of the rainbow. I don't know if any of you are into Pink Floyd. You know, Pink Floyd, <laughs> Dark Side of the Moon, that classic album cover. Yeah. So all the colors of the rainbow, that's the world of duality. That's the world of the many. You know, the black shirt, the pink socks. Talia over there, okay, necklace. Do you see? That's the white light that's split into all the thousands, multitudes of forms, forms and shapes and colors and all the rest of it. Right? Now, when we're unawakened, all the body mind sees is all the colors, the 10,000 things, as I said earlier. And I'm an isolated thing in a world of 10,000 things. You see? You with me? Yes. But when you awaken, the 10,000 things are still there, but you see, you recognize, you know, there's only one thing. This, this is all a modification of the one being, the one consciousness, that you are. Right? 
It's all a modification ultimately of my self. You see? So then you're in a you're still a body mind <coughs> perceiving the world. The world appears just the same, you could say. <coughs> but your your experience, your perception of being an individual is radically different. You see? You're still an individual, but now you're an individual expression of that which is indivisible, that which is one. 